Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Christ here departs from the temple area, leaving that place desolate, deserted, just as he said he would. Jesus had prior denounced the nation, and he said he would leave them empty, void of his peace and his presence. Our Lord never again returns to Jerusalem. And in our verses for today, he predicts its ruin. Our house is left desolate if Jesus isn't there. We open up our lives to all sorts of evil when his presence is not present. It's important to note that Christ did not reject them until they rejected him first. He's always trying to draw to himself. You'll never find him forcing himself on anybody. He is too humble for such behavior. He, he's a wooer, not a dictator. His call harkens back to chapter 11, where he says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. In today's verses, we also see the disciples enamored by the buildings of the temple area, and they bring them to Jesus' attention, as if he needed such direction. The temple and its buildings, they were stately. They were gorgeously furnished. The disciples were in awe and admiration of the massive stones and the structures. Even good men are prone to be overly enamored with outward pomp and circumstance, and they tend to overvalue it. All the temple area with all its various porches, colonnades, balconies, and courts apparently was a sight to behold. But with large white stones that were polished and generously decorated with gold as it shined in the sun, I guess it was a formidable sight. As in most things, Jesus' actions, thoughts, and words are much different than our own. They're infinitely higher. Christ foretells the utter ruin and destruction coming upon this place. The temple would not only be stripped, plundered, and defaced, it would all but be burned to the ground. Jesus' words concerning the temple serve as a foresight that all the world will eventually be burned up, keeping us from overvaluing worldly glory in whatever form it takes. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and all the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus is the risen and glorified Word of God, whose words never fail. Thank you that Jesus is the living Word of God whose promises stand fast forever and ever and ever. Thank you that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what trials or tribulations I may face, I can hold fast to your word, the word of truth, which will never fail. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.